What do you think about this one? Ataku. That'll eat that. Take three. No brainer. I will resolve now. Just don't be two mountains. Not two mountains. That was a terrible block unless they have another Thalia. If they have another Thalia, it was fine. Um, if not, I think it was very bad. Obliterating version. You just, I just literally just don't want to win. Like, I don't understand. Like, I'm showing you Kamano faces Kagazan. One, two, three, four, five. Right? Like, it was on the battlefield. One, two, three, four. Two, four, six, seven, eight. It was literally on the battlefield. Okay. I mean, got to got to flip Rona. Good morning, friends. Today we're going to talk about a brand new card from March of the Machines and a brand new archetype you've probably never seen before. The brand new archetype is Mono Red Aggro. Attack, attack, attack. I know it's a completely new strategy. Hasn't been around since the days of Paul Sly and Jay Schneider, circa 1995 or 1996. Has not, not been around longer than many of you are alive. Nor has this new card been around, Ren's Resolve. Ren's Resolve, again, a brand new card from March of the Machine. Uh, it's a sorcery, one and an R. Exile the top two cards of your library until the end of your next turn. You may play those cards. I saw this card, and I'm like, wow, what a paradigm-changing card. I wonder if there are any archetypes it could go into. And just the gears start rolling, and I'm like, what if we played it in a, in a deck that had a bunch of low casting cost cards? Maybe we could cheat a little bit on our lands, maybe only play 20 lands. Could we get there? It's a brand new card. It's, it's impossible to say. Um, there's only one way to find out, and that's to play with the card. Um, I jest, obviously. This deck is very similar to a deck that I may think made my second video since my comeback on. A mono red deck uh, that Covert Go Blue designed. Uh, I'm replacing Reckless Impulse, which was the functionally identical card with Ren's Resolve. Ren's Resolve is the new version. Ha ha ha. Um, there are some other kind of changes in new cards. So this is the best of three version. You probably can't read the whole thing. It, it claims to be best of three version. I have here 19 mountains and one mountain. In the best of one version, we're going to play best of one event today. I have a Soken Zon in place of the mountain. However, in the best of three version, I only play zero Soken Zons. And I have a separate mountain with a different art um, in order to track how badly it affects me in game ones in, in particular to have no Soken Zon and just have more mountains. Uh, people say, hey, isn't that really results-oriented? Yes, I'm interested in results. I would like to read the results so that I have an idea uh, for you know further decisions. People play, I played two Soken Zons in some decks in the past. Um, people always just throw in a Legend Lands, they play one Soken Zon without thinking about it, but it might not necessarily be right. Best deck designer on Earth, Sam Blank, did not play Igonjo in his white control deck that we looked at last week, right? So, this is a, a very great opportunity to kill our darlings. Now, why would we not play a Soken Zon? Isn't it just better than a Mountain? It is, if you're playing only best of one. However, in the best of three version, we have this card, Koth Fire of Resistance after sideboarding. So, one of the big problems for red aggro decks in standard is this card, um, Shieldred the Apocalypse. So Shieldred is so powerful, and it has five toughness. She has five toughness. So you need to get ways like Rending Flame and Koth to help destroy Shieldred. The problem is, if you get Koth, you have four mana, right? 
you activate Koth once, you're guaranteed to have five mana. So theoretically, Koth's minus three, if you're able to keep Koth on the battlefield, should always be able to kill Shieldred. But the problem is, sometimes one of your first four mana was a Sokin Zon. So the thing isn't like, oh no, I never draw Koth, I can't win. The bigger problem is if you draw Koth and you can't win. You can draw and play Koth, but you didn't have enough mountains in order to kill Shieldred. And they're like, well, doesn't that not come up very often? Well, I would say it doesn't come up as often, you know, if you're going to have, you know, four lands, it's more likely that you're going to have four mountains than three mountains and a Sokin Zon in the abstract. But the the real problem is you have four Koth and only one Sokin Zon, which is the more important card in a best of three scenario. I, I would argue that it's Koth, which is why I've structured my best of three version this way. However, I don't know, which is why I marked it with separately so that I can generate data over time and, and formulate my decision. I think a lot of people would just kind of brainlessly decide that they're going to play, uh, they're going to play one Sokens on, and I don't know if that's ultimately right. It is definitely not right in the abstract. Like you have to, like you have to put a little more thought into this than that. So, uh, rest of the deck. Um, so this deck is structured with a lot of cantrips in the main deck. We have four copies of Ancestral Anger, four copies of Blazing Crescendo, and four copies of Ren's Resolve. Those cards together all say some version of draw a card or <laughs> exile a card at the top of your library, or exile even two cards, allowing you to move through your deck more quickly. So even though this deck only has 20 land, it plays like a deck that has like 26 land. Um, so... Uh, you, you do need to get like your second or third land in order to really get humming, but once you're humming, you, you can play like you have more land than the typical red deck. Uh, it's got Kamano Faces Kakazan, Monastery Swiss Spear, and a full four set of Phoenix Chick of the One, so you have 12 one drops, a Bloodthirsty Adversary, and Felden on two. There's only one Felden in this deck. That's how Covert Go Blue built it. Uh, Ain't Broke, Don't Fix It. I won a lot of events, and this is my primary grinding deck for ladder. Uh, I'm not sure how many Feldens is the right number, but. This many Feldens has been kicking a lot of people's bum. Uh, and then three copies of Squee, Dubious Monarch. My preference is uh, to play Furnace Punisher at the three in the abstract, but this deck, every single creature has haste. And with four Ancestral Anger and four Blazing Crescendo, every creature having haste is, is a powerful set of things that you would put together. What's new uh, in the sideboard? So I always played Koth, Rending Flame, and Koth to fight Shieldred after sideboarding, but I played a lot of new cards uh, from March of the Machine in my sideboard as well. Um, one of the new cards is Lithomantic Barrage. Previously, I had two copies of Obliterating Bolt, but the creatures that you want to kill with Obliterating Bolt are typically white creatures. So three, four Rebuy Angels, you know, Archangels, you know, things, things of that nature. Lithomantic Barrage does five damage to a white creature and it costs half as much mana. Here's the cool thing about this card. If Mono Blue comes back, you know, Talarian Terror and Cottagen dot deck, I think the argument I would make was to play like all the Lithomantic Barrages in the world because this card is insanity against them. You, you don't have to pay the ward, right? This card can't be can't be countered. You just cast this. Um, in some matchups, you know, Thalia and the Gitrog Monster, that card is also white. That's a problematic card uh, for a small creature deck oftentimes. It has a lot of text on it and a lot of toughness. It is also white. So Lithomantic Brudge is good against Thalia and the Gitrog Monster. I only have two right now because I replaced my Obliterating Bolts. And I'm not sure how I would like long run optimize this because so much of my sideboard is devoted to point removal, right? So I have Lithomantic Barrage, um, Rending Flame, and Koth, which are all... Koth is like... You're often happy if you get one removal shot out of Koth. If you get anything else out of Koth, like one draw of... a uh, of a mountain or you like you know steal an attack the attack is probably going to be worth more than one damage right so koth has base loyalty of four minus three puts it to one they're often going to use more than one power to kill koth you're typically happy i mean not real happy like you really want to win with ultimate like a lot of the games after sideboarding are you just all your guys are on d they protect koth you plus two a couple of times and then they die to your your emblem but it's often a positive exchange, I should say, if you just play Koth, kill their best guy, and swing. Uh, Koth, you know, also triggers Monastery Swiss Beer. And then I have this other new card, which is Volcanic Spite. So Volcanic Spite is one in an R, uh, deals three to uh, creature, planeswalker, or battle. 
right? So it can't hit humans, uh, but it can hit the humans in front of the humans. Um, and then you may put a card from your hand on the bottom of your library if you do draw a card. I'm playing two copies of this card, so I wanted to have some point removal that was still good against like the red mirror. And this card, for example, is very good at killing Raijus and Squeeze before they attack because it's an instant and does three damage. And the sort of subtle thing here is oftentimes in sideboarded games, you need to be siding out cards like Blazing Crescendo because this, this card is very, 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 very risk-reward biased, risk-high, reward-high. And if the opponent kills your guy at instant speed in response to the Blazing Crescendo, it's not just that you got two for one. It's not just you didn't get damage in. Both of those things are bad. But your deck unlaces, right? You, you need to move forward with cantrip cards in this deck because there's only 20 land. So Volcanic Spite was kind of like my compromise in order to, to keep the deck moving. The last card in my sideboard is Fable of the Mirror Breaker. Um, and this is a, another card which just helps get your deck moving. I find personally that Fable of the Mirror Breaker is very, very comparable offensively to Squee, right? So they're both two twos for three that have token upside. Um, Fable of the Mirror Breaker is dramatically better on the play than it is on the draw. Squee is much better. Like, it's, you always want to be on the play if you can, but um, Squee is much better on the draw than Fable is in this deck. But Fable does two things. One, it's very good on the play, right? It's all, it's, it's barely worse than Squee. Um, on the play because on turn three you're tapping out anyway so you can't cast your ancestral anger or blazing crescendo anyway but the more important thing about this is oftentimes you're bringing in fable of the mirror breaker you're also bringing in koth which is expensive and both the ability to cycle through your deck and the ability to make treasures helps you cast koth so um, this is an important part of the deck it is the single best card against mono white control uh, I think mono white control can go either way. If you're on on the play in game one and they, they have kind of like one of those clunky long term value draws and they're not playing like Steel Seraph in the main deck, for example, you often just run them over. But I think they have a little bit of an edge, generally speaking. If you draw a fable in a sideboarded game and they're just mono white, like they're not like Sam Black, Red White, you almost always win. Um, you just just that little bit of oomph is enough to... Because you're cascading into really powerful cards, right? It's not like you're just fabling into land or whatever. You're discarding Phoenix Chicks, which you're, you're then going to rebuy, and then you, you drew Koth, and now have the mana to cast it. Like, that's really powerful. So I don't know if the sideboard's super optimized yet, because Lithomantic Brush is so good. Uh, I think this definitely deserves a four of in some metagames. I only have two of because I just replaced Obliterating Bolt with it, and my sideboard is just so much point removal. It's just like, here's point removal for this matchup, here's point removal for this matchup. If I didn't have Volcanic Spite, I would both not have some juice to replace the Blazing Crescendos and not have really anything good to sideboard in the mirror. Right. So if you're just like siding in Koth in the mirror, Koth is pretty good in the mirror, but like, how do you even get to four, right? You're siding out cards like Blazing Crescendo. Um, so, you know, I kind of need that card. Uh, I, I do I do think that in the future I'm probably going to get to some point where I have four Lithomantic Barrage. But today, I'm so scared of Shielded, I have four Koth and three Rending Flame. Uh, none of that sideboard stuff matters because we're going to play a best of one event. Um, why are we playing a best of one event? Michael J., you love best of three magic. Sideboarding is your strongest skill. Yes, but I also love the built-in narrative of events. And the return on best of three events is so bad. Right, like I'm like literally like throwing up gems and gold to play in the events, and I just I just want to have some chance of making a return, not just making good. Con Hopefully, what you would perceive as good content, but um, not just good content, but also a return. So uh, yeah, I the return on best of one events is very good, and the return on best of three events, I almost would rather be playing ladder. So um, I have to play a little ladder anyway. Maybe we'll play some this week. Oh, how are we doing? What are we doing here? Uh, heroes are at 691. That's not too bad. And how long do we have to stay on this? Three days. That's kind of a long time uh, at 691. So I don't know. Uh, if we have to play some ladder, we'll play some ladder. Um, if not, we're going to play more events. And uh, we're going to showcase new decks. And I hope you've been loving the channel. Being, I, I love being back. Hope you loved me being back. Uh, I'll see you after the jump. All right, friends. Mono red aggro. As you know, one of my favorite archetypes. Ren's Resolve, a brand new card from March of the Machine. Never before seen card. Opponent goes first. Terrible. Don't recommend it. Um, there's 
they stink of cut down. Basic swamp lord. Oh no. What could have been worse? Straight up nothing could have been worse. They're literally just the anti-us deck. <laughs> For my next trick, I will play Graveyard Trespasser, followed by Shieldred. Phyrexian Flesh Gorger. Also not great. Rock and roll, friends. But this combo is just horrendous. Like, what choice do we have? So we'll take the action. Twenty life. We're down like a hundred cards. Oh. <laughs> we just never attack and can't win. They're just literally like they only played cards that are good against us. I mean, that's not entirely true, but can you imagine what a joke these cards are against like. Grixis, Mono White, Red White. I guess they really wanted to beat us. And they did. Obliterator. And the number of times I've beaten a Phyrexian Obliterator in Modern with Mono Red exceeds zero. It exceeds zero. It was a non card. I guess maybe not mono red. I would Boros it up, right? Like I would use Pad to Exile or Chain to the Rocks. Give my Monastery Swift Spears prowess. Get in there. Oh my god, that was that was such a beating. I guess if you want to be mono red, you can <laughs> just play only cards that are good against mono red, and you will. Alright, uh, this is a race. Pew pew! They mono black? What do they got? This guy is death touch, right? So he's probably gonna attack us. Will you attack us? Okay. It's gonna be one of those games. Swifty J here. Get in. Anger the Swift Spear so that the block is unattractive. Well, this is interesting. We play another Swift Spear. Just attack. We get like two trades here, kill both of our Swift Spears, we'll trade with these guys. I would actually block both. I mean, the Swift Spear is much more dangerous than this straight up. They already have a poison on us. We'll trample over for two, take three total. What do you got? Brass so we're basically at seven, right? So seven to nine. They're gonna have like a like one maybe one of those rats that put up rates when it dies. Yeah, that's correct. Heroes at six. Ooh, take that. Here is at five. Put them to five. They have to have something pretty good here, or I think we're gonna win next turn. Don't think they can put five poison on us. Uh, no, thank you. If we had had four land and play already, I would have kept that. We could... That's good enough. Good enough. And I could have uh, rebought. I'll auto pay that. Can you beat all of these things? If you can, can you also deal five poison in one turn before I lightning strike you to death? It's a difficult set of questions. 
So this game they played a Vraska's Fall, and then Mono Rats. All right, back on the winning, back on the winning streak. Played against only mono black decks. One mono black deck that we could never beat, and one mono black deck I think we have a decent edge against. That first one was. Jitte Saga. Jitte Saga. Lifelink, Ward Guy, Obliterator. This is not friendly. What is this? A forest. Venerated Robin. I'm going to do one of these because Rob Priest is not currently protected. It sucks, to be clear. Not super happy with that. Uh, we also have four lands already. Not super happy with that. So, there's a lot of things to not be happy with. Red green, in fact. Maybe it's less likely they play white. Kyrian Beast Call. Interesting. Yeah, of course we cycled into more land. Can you block me? You had a good block here. Six land. <laughs> First of all, I don't like that against red green uh, at all. I don't like us in the abstract necessarily against red. Oh, that guy doesn't block. I like guys who don't block. Six land. Dangerous thing for him is that etching a Kamano will exile Bloodfeather Phoenix permanently. I don't know, I wonder if they had thought about that. Tail swipe. Choose target creature control and target creature you don't control. If you cast a spell during your main phase, then they fight each other. What if you fought a creature with this much power? <sighs> well, on the other hand, they're down to six. If we just draw, like, a Bloodthirsty Adversary or something, then they're in trouble. And this is redonkulous. Okay, they're dead on board to our draw of only land. So I guess that's good. Okay, I'll swipe. Two cards, two cards, come on. If I win this game, I am the hero of ages. Brandon Sanderson should write a book about me. Straight up the hero of ages. Okay, that guy, does this block? It blocks. Hero of ages! Block here. Uh, why are we making block here? Because at a minimum, we take off the clock, right? Like, you know, we just need to draw something to win the game. Breach? Does this kill us? What does this do? Trample haste. Five. Oh my god, that was so cool. We drew eight land? How many spells did we draw? One, two, three, four, five, six. Eight land, eight spells. Oh. Hero of Ages. Brandon. So I know Brandon reads some of my articles. He has told me as such. One of the reasons I got to be a beta reader on some of his The Stormlight Archive books. But, Brandon, if you've seen that match, you should know that I, I Michael J., am the Hero of Ages. Um, you know. Now that the wax and wane cycle on on uh, on Mistborn is done, Sazed needs a inheritor. It could be Michael J. All right, opponent goes first. 
keepable hand. This is not like a super explosive or super exciting hand. We do have a swift spear. Like that. Opponent mulliganing. Like that. Another red green. Don't like that. I don't like these red greens. Man. The creatures are huge. They often have similar kind of removal to us, sometimes better. Just play like a beast caller. Just just play a beast caller. Invasion of Urkamon. Alright. Are you like a reanimator deck? Discarding something. Is it awesome? Oof. Get in there. Maybe this card's good with Swiss Spear, right? Swiss Spear is just any non-creature spell. So battles are non-creature. So I'd have expected that. It's like, oh. Second turn battle. Probably get Brotherhood's in. I thought they were going to be a creature deck or a red green. Fable. You got it. Alright, what do we do here? Um, the plan is to strike this guy, right? So, we will do that. Attack. Next turn could be sweet. Depends what they have, but... Um, we're going to draw two cards, right? So we're going to draw whatever our top of our deck is. We're going to have two Swift Spears down next turn. Ancestral Anger, probably going to go on Felden. I don't know. It depends if maybe they play a giant thing. We have to put it on Swift Spear and roll the dice. Probably going Felden um, to draw fire over there, and then Swift Spears could double up. Who knows? It's a mystery. Opponent's got two basic forests. Nonsense land. Maybe they have like a herd migration here. How much damage can we do this turn? One, two, six, seven. Lightning strike smells lethal. Cruelty of Gix. There's nothing to get. You're going to go to 9, tapping down? What are you going to get? Oh, a cut down. A cut down is a spell that they could get. If a cut down is what they draw, we really want to draw an instant speed removal spell. That is an instant speed removal spell. So, it's going to change our play pattern a little bit. Uh, anger. No, it shouldn't, actually. So, I'll put anger there. Attack. Uh, why did we not shoot him before combat damage? I don't know. Because we were busy thinking about the content instead of making the correct play. That's, that's the honest to God answer. Obviously we should have done that, which would have put them to to dead off of the prowess triggers instead of having to resolve the play with fire to win. And then the damage would have won. Uh, what was I afraid of? If they had a spell pierce, it might have been bad. All right, sand is weird. If they're, if they're playing like a weird slow deck, we can run them over. Looks like they're playing a regular slow deck. A lot of things can go wrong here, right? So remove the Phoenix Chicken too. A variety of horrible things can happen to us. Uh, opponent's best play is probably kill one of these guys with a one for one and then Corpse Appraiser or, um, that is not the best play. That is a good play. It's not the best play. Puts them to 10. If they have Shieldred... It's like not even great. We're gonna have a three-three squee dubious monarch. Attack with everything. Get them to seven or something. Liliana of the Veil. Irrelevant. Enough Cut down. I've come for answers. Yep. <laughs> Haven't you ever heard of personal space?
I mean, arguable we should have just sent everyone over to them, because if they make us this card, we're just going to discard um, a mountain, but... You know, they might get to discard an Atraxa. Okay, this is not great. Bring her back! What's their best block? Two two twos on the ground. Are they dead? Yeah! I did have fun. I did have fun. They did not draw Shieldred. I mean, I think, like, if you want to make a criticism of how cerebral the mono red deck is, <laughs> that game was probably a pretty good example. I, like, was barely paying attention. I just cast whatever spell that I drew. Crossed my fingers. My opponents did not draw the correct response spells, and uh, they died to a Phoenix Chick rebuy. Um, that's probably not 100% accurate, but my deck mostly played itself that game. We go first. What do we got? Keep setting here. What do we like? This is always a toughie. And when you have Monastery Swift Spear and Kamano Faces Kakazan, it's not always clear which is the right one to play. I think I'm going to play Kamano Faces Kakazan. Bald Sleeper. I will. Maybe I should have played the Phoenix Chick first. Sleeper can't block anyway. Like a a one two monastery sister is just as good, and the, this is already like a lightning rod for removal. Under Dizzle. to make this really unattractive for them. So, there is no block here that isn't atrocious. Like, you know, like, yeah, this block is so bad. Down to six. They good gamed us. You never know what happens there. We have a great bird test passer. There's no creatures in the graveyard. Throat that. One up. I feel like if they... Alright, it is, it is a good game. <laughs> Alright, little Phoenix chip. What we got, baby? Come on, no trigger. They have to block here. They just lose their guy. Take four, go to two. Or they don't block at all. Because they're so sad. Yeah, I'm wondering, maybe I should have put the put the Phoenix Chick down first. Broke even. Broke even. You don't know how many times I didn't break even in order to get here for the content. You don't know. Could have been zero times. This is a very reliable deck, and this is the deck um, that I said you know, earlier in the video that I use primarily for, for grinding ladder. Um, this hand doesn't have a first turn play, so it's not the best. Felled in. It's a good second turn play against a lot of draws. Oh, dark such short as alternate dark. They did not have a cut down. If they did, they probably would have cut him down. Damn it. Not a fan. Give you a clean trade on Felden here. It's the last chance you're gonna have. Uh, so, what's their best play? Rafine? Rafine would be really good, actually. No Rafine. Back to 16. Double black. Caves. 
get this out of the way. Oh, maybe I should have played a land. I mean, I don't think this deck plays Make Disappear, but you never know. Um, I probably should have waited until post- oh, this is a good card. Post-combat for that just because maybe they had, like, reinforcements. But, I mean, I will take reinforcements versus spell. Denic rebuy next turn? What do you think about this one? Ataku. That'll eat that. Take three. No brainer. I will resolve now. Just don't be two mountains. Not two mountains. That was a terrible block, unless they have another Thalia. If they have another Thalia, it was fine. Um, if not, I think it was very bad. Obliterating version. I just, I just literally just don't want to win. Like, I don't understand. Like, I'm showing you Kamano faces Kagazan. One, two, three, four, five. Right? Like, it was on the battlefield. One, two, three, four. Two, four, six, seven, eight. It was literally on the battlefield. Okay. I mean, got to got to flip Rona. That block was so bad. If they had left Thalia, I think they had a good chance of winning the game. Lost to give. Lost to give. I don't want to give it though. Don't want to give it. Seven and one is better than seven and two. Come on, deck. Oh, we're up against a Jin Gitaxius Avatar gamer. Opponent goes first. Our hand is Straight up okay. Scroll. This could be so many things. So many things. Blue white. Rona. Terrible play. I'm like, do you care about Rona's life? If you do attacking there to get one poison. I mean, you're not going to straight up race me with a Skrelv. Graphene. Respect. I'm just going to send the chick. How bad are you? Not bad enough, I guess. Well, we had a loss to give. Uh, this combo is obviously really hard to beat. <laughs> uh, land? Okay. We get to keep playing. Oh, no, we don't. Skrelf. Skrelf, Skrelf, Skrelf. Day late and a dollar short. <laughs> and use the scrub anyway. Denic. Wrong Denic though. It 
Is it better? So we can't kill Thalia reasonably anyway, right? Just let Squee be stranded. They're at 18. Oh, you had shield ready. Yeah, okay. <sighs> I mean, like, they gave us so much hope with that shielded block. Huh, well. They're not going to get another shielded block. Are you going to do there over there? So that could potentially get plus two, plus two. I mean, the life gain on the shield is what's going to be insurmountable for us. That's a three, two. Three, two, two, three. There you guys first strike. I guess we just have to take it. I mean, a different thought is just like, let's preserve our mental energy for the next game. We did have a loss to do. We can't win this one. Why? That shielded block on the Monastery Swiftsper gave us so much hope. But like that combo is so difficult to beat. Rafine into Shieldred. Ugh. And they had, like, Thalia also. Like, all the toys. Uh, Esper Legends was the deck that I tested against most for uh, the regional championship in San Diego with my mono red deck at the time. I mean, obviously, we're, it's a best of three format. So I was playing two out of three games potentially with Rending Flame and um, and Koth in my deck, which is... But I ended up playing a different red deck, which had Mistress Foundry, so I did play Sogan's on in that deck. But I really love this deck. Um, and by this deck, I mean the previous version, which had Reckless Impulse, obviously. It's a little bit different deck. Um, and different sideboard, but... I really love that deck, and I, I found Esper Legends to be a very favorable matchup, especially in three, because of our ability to deal with their five. Opponent goes first. Ugh. All right. I think... I don't know what they're going to do, but I think I might go Swift Spear into Double Kamano in this game. There's so much damage potential we get here. And the Phoenix Chick's going to be huge. I mean, assuming they don't kill the Swift Spear or play Thalia. I mean, they obviously have reinforcements. They play Make Disappear in their Soldier's deck? Oh my god, how good is it that we played Swift Spear first? Like, most of the time you play Kamano first. I feel like Swift Spear first is so much better in this game. We would have had no threat. Now instead they're going to get murdered. Creature removal spell. Okay, what do we got here? I'm gonna play Ren's Resolve. Might have a one casting cost creature come off the top. I must say, these are some of the least effective mace disappears I've ever seen in my life. So I can't complain about this Soldier's deck being, like, completely non-decision intensive. They're playing all kinds of cards that I would just never even play. Um, okay. Kamano faces Kaka's on flips. What do you got? Wandering Emperor. Sure. Finally, I'm home. Chickadee. I'll I'll allow it. My judgment is final. Uh, I think they're gonna go Sky Strike, give it plus one plus one. Until they have another Emperor. Time, 
Let your blade do the talking. Only make that play if you have another emperor. Dooby dooby doo. Uh, expectation is we lose a guy to combat. Protect the negotiators. Sure. Do we have four in the graveyard? Not yet. Um. I think if we attack like this, they're not going to just get the free block here because they're afraid that we have like a... Hmm, that was a good play. They're on three. Could be dead to the top of our deck. Sky Strike. These are not soldiers, right? You have to tap soldiers. That's a soldier. That is not a soldier. It's a samurai. Four. That's in. Free block there. Ooh, destroy evil. What a wild world we live in. Down to five. Samurai two cards in hand versus no cards in hand and squee. Sky strike. What a weird deck. On the other hand, we have like a million turns to draw something good. What's the other? The other plays is we just attack, they block, we shock the Sky Strike Officer, and then... What did you draw that that was a playable play? Emperor? Another Sky Strike? Just give me, just give me a... a burn spell, and we can, we can, uh, be, un be done with it. Protect and Vigation. Swift Spear, I don't want you. How often do I say I don't want a Swift Spear? Let's try this. Land. Enchantment. Creature. Enchantment. I think that they must have drawn another Emperor. Oh, protect the negotiations. Fair enough. Dead to, like, I don't know, 30% of our deck. We're at 12. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. We are on a... We have two turns if they attack with everything. They had to have drawn money here because... Let's just try this. Had to have drawn money. They didn't! I think he had to leave the Sky Strike back. Like, we were on a two turn clock, but, like, that's assuming we have nothing, and they're. I'd have to do the math, but I think they're bad to the squee if they didn't draw money. Okay! <sighs> that was a hard fought. Hard fought path to seven wins. Seven and two. Let's claim it. 500 gemsies. Play in point. What do we got? What did we got? Azuri Claw of Progress. A 3 3 for 4. There's a lot of text. I don't know if I'm going to read this right now. Uh, Arch Piece of Shadows. A 4 4 for 5 with backup and death touch. I won the March of the Machine pre release with a backup death touch because I knew death touch trample rules, allowing me to beat an opponent who had two shielders in play. Michael J. He had two shielders in play. He did. He, he had a seven cast across shielded and the five casting across shielded in play. It was a dramatic, it was a dramatic finale. I would have lost the next turn. Fairy Mastermind, Invitational card. Sorry, World Championship card. I apologize. Finally, 
What do we get here? Boonbringer Valkyrie. Backup. Flying first strike lifelink. I think like the ability to give something lifelink the turn it comes into play is kind of sweet. First strike flying. So this is like a hacker, you know, a to the air. It's hacker's prayer, right? So this could be a to the air. It's hacker's prayer play. Um, lifelink's cool. Let's talk about Fairy Mastermind. That is a card that you might actually want to buy a copy of in paper. If you want to do that because you think that that card is sweet, powerful, probably going to see some play in older formats like Modern or um, Legacy. If you want to do that, Fairy Mastermind. I would recommend that you uh, visit my friends at CoolStuffInc.com. And while you're there... Utilize the promo code Flores, F-L-O-R-E-S, for 5% off of your order, whether it's Fairy Mastermind or anything else that's cool in the store. Thank you so much for your time. I appreciate it. Please tell all your friends if you got this far and you liked the video. Uh, I would appreciate that, too. Have a great day.